This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043. Mike Scott of the Water Boys joins us in the studio. Uh, the new album, All Souls Hill, the band's 15th studio album. I think I have that right, Mike. Is it 15 or have you lost track? It's the Water Boys 15th. But if you include the two that came out under my own name in the 90s, it's the 17th. Ah, okay. Um, and shows this week in Manhattan and Brooklyn, all the info and tour, date, uh, tour dates, MikeScottWaterboys.com. Um, I noticed uh, you are playing Glastonbury yes, uh, right. this year, and I looked at the lineup. Of course, the names standing out to me, Paul McCartney, Robert Plant, Billy Eilish, Noel Gallagher, Fontaine's DC. Uh, do you have any bands you're excited to see when you go there? No. Just yourself? I've been so many times. and um, How many times have you played Glasgow? About 12. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is that, uh, where does that stand in the pantheons of festivals in the UK? Is that the number one? Oh, of or course. It of is course. the number one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're probably among the top five acts who've played it the most number of times, along with Costello and Billy Bragg and a few others. Yeah. Um, what, when was the first gig that you guys played or were allowed to play after the pandemic? Was it very recently or? It was in October, 2021. We did it. Oh no, summer 2021. We did a couple of festivals. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Um, I, I saw on your Instagram and this really made me mad that somebody stole one of your guitars. Four of my guitars. Four of your guitars. in Nashville, yeah. Oh my. So uh, any progress, any... Yes, you'll be sorry you asked. Um, yes, a detective has found that all four guitars were sold to Nashville, Nashville's branch of Guitar Center. Come on! Who've, who've already sold them to unsuspecting, uh, decent, upstanding citizens. Customers, yeah. Customers, yes. And we just don't know what the legal position is. We're trying to find out. Of course, the customers are under no obligation to give them back because they've paid money for them. Right. Somewhere in the, the series of transactions... There's got to be a point where there's a responsibility. We, we don't know what that is. And I I, I don't think I'm going to see those guitars Oh, again. man, that's like the... What, what, where, one was an acoustic? Were they all acoustics? They were all acoustic. One, only one was a, a, a real special guitar to me. It was a, a Martin Shenandoah that I bought on on um, 48th Street here in Manhattan about 30 years ago. And I, oh, that great store on, on 48th? It's no yeah, longer there. Yeah, yeah. I, I used it on so many great records. And I would like that guitar back. The other three were, were working guitars yeah. with no great sentimental value. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so investigation currently underway yeah. as we speak. So, uh, well, we'll try and get the word out there. Because uh, to me, that's like kidnapping. You know what I mean? It really, it's a terrible crime. I'm a, yeah. like a frustrated... Well, they've actually caught the guy that, that sold them. Oh, they the did? Guitar center, yeah. Yeah. The, but there's... Well, the question is just where does where's the legal responsibility? But right. The guitar center out of order because they bought stolen gear, but then we hadn't yet registered that they were stolen, that the guitar center had no way of knowing. It's a complicated situation. Right. Well, I wish you the best of luck. I hope you get Thank them you. back. Um, do I have this correct 40 years of the Water Boys next year, 2023? Yeah, I suppose so. I don't really think in terms of anniversaries, though, so yeah. it's not a big deal to me. But I read something about you compiling, is it a box set or is it like a big sort of, like compilation of things over the years? I, I'm working on a This Is The Sea box set. Okay. Not related to any anniversary. Ah, okay. Um, this new album of songs, much more collaborative than normal in recent times. I yeah. mean, you, you normally write all the songs on acoustic guitar and piano, piano yeah. right? I tend yeah. to write in a room, and I might have a collaborator, but, but usually I've written the bulk of the songs myself. But on this record, almost all of them are, are collaborations with other writers. In fact... I didn't write the music, as, as in the chords, of any of these songs. And when we, we came to consider playing live, live concerts, I had to learn how to play them. <laughs> <laughs> well, so talk about that experience. Was it fun? Was it, it was easy? A, was it, it... Well, it was a novelty, man. And, and, and working out how to play them on acoustic guitar, I had to, you know, play along with the track, just like learning somebody else's record. Yeah. The only thing I knew was the melodies, because I wrote the melodies, but I didn't write the, the backing. Right. Yeah, quite a novelty. Um, on this new album, which I was really excited to see, you you also cover a song from a, a true legend, Robbie Robertson, yeah. uh, of the band. Uh, tell us about why that song and uh, 
How did, how did that come about? It's a song called Once We're Brothers, and as you probably know, it was the title of a documentary about the band, and the song features in the documentary. And I love the song, and on Robbie's, Robbie's version, it, it's a couple of verses, a bridge, and a chorus, and that's the end. And I found myself falling in love with the song and wishing that Robbie had written a little bit more. When it gets to the, the last chorus, I'm wishing that there would be an extra verse that would just just deliver the killer emotional punch. And, and, and of course, Robbie does that so often in his songs. And I just, I missed it. And a strange thing happened. I found myself writing the verse that I wished Robbie had written. And I recorded a demo of it. And I thought, oh, this is just for my own entertainment. You know, I'm never going to be able to put this out. But I liked it so much. And it seemed to fit so well that I asked our manager, Danny Goldberg, if, if he would contact Robbie's team and see if there was a chance that Robbie would say, oh, all right. And within days, we got the word back. Oh, Robbie likes the Water Boys. Robbie says, it's fine. Go ahead. And he didn't ask me to change anything back or to adjust it in any way. He just said, cool. And an incredibly gracious thing. Wow. So there's a, a whole new verse that I've written. And I, I adjusted bits of the other lyrics, I suppose, to bring them into line with a new verse that I'd written and... And of course, if Robbie had said, "Would you change this back?" I would have been cool with it. Yeah, yeah, it was so great. Um, I read about another person who did that. I, I recently in, had was very lucky to interview Daryl Hall, um, and he did that with a Marvin Gaye song, Ooh. like on one of his solo albums, like back in the day. How and he, did Marvin feel about it? Well, Marvin had unfortunately passed, but he asked the estate, and uh, they were cool with it too. Yeah, so good. I love that. Um, you have said that this new album, All Souls Hill, is quote. Mysterious, otherworldly, tune banging, and emotional. I made it with Water Boys, old and new, and my co-producer, brilliant sonic guru Simon Dine. It's nine songs, tell stories, explore dreamscapes, and cast a cold but hopeful eye on the human drama. Yeah, talk about that more. Well, I can't add to that. That's, That's it. it. That's it. That's, That's the, the perfect the quote. That's yeah. the headline That's right it. there. Um, yeah. There's a track also on the album called "The Liar," which seems to be as an American, pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Or maybe I have that completely wrong. Oh, no, you've got it completely right. There's no doubt about who and what it's about. Got it. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'm so glad that you came by and uh, okay. gave us a few minutes of your time. I I have to ask you, though, um, and, and and you get this you get this question a lot, um, your great song, Hole of the Moon, had somewhat of a resurgence in the last uh, few years. It's been heard in TV shows Fiona Apple yes, uh, covered it. Beautiful version, yeah. Uh, I went to a U2 show where they play the song right before they came on stage. And I kid you not, a sold out Madison Square Garden sang every single word, uh, every single lyric yeah. of that song. And it, it just completely changed the mood of like the normal pre concert, whatever, get a drink, yeah. find your seat. Yeah. And then your song came on. Mm. It just changed the entire vibe. It was incredible mm. you you have been blessed to write one of those songs that have you know just you know when people people hear it they they automatically get happy or or another perhaps you know sensation happens mm. to them i don't know mm. but tell me what that's like for you well because i wasn't there when when it was played before the u2 shows but people are always telling me oh so and so the killers have been playing your song live and uh, I think Bleachers, Jack Antonoff's yes. band was the most recent one. And someone's always playing it somewhere. Prince did it. Prince covered it in 2016. I mean, that right there. Before he died. Yeah, fantastic. And he changed it. I really like when people transform the songs. Prince turned it into a Black Lives Matter protest song, and he flipped it into I Saw the Whole of the Moon. Uh, and I really liked what he did. I really respected that he, he made it his own. He, he flipped it to his own purposes. And one of my favorite versions of Holy Moon is the gay disco version. Oh, really? It's done in the late 90s. And it's, you know, it's doosh, doosh, doosh. It's that groove. <laughs> and it's a girl singer. And and uh, it's very naughty what they did. They took, they took the opening line. You know, the opening line is, I pictured a rainbow, you held it in your hands. They, they, they scrapped the picture a rainbow bit. And they just sang, you held it in your hands about four or five times <laughs> at the beginning of the song. And I thought, that's class. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I think it was in a show that I watched here in America called The Affair, which was on Showtime. Um, a couple times that show was very, you know, it was a very popular yeah. show and they play that song. But uh, uh, I guess for, for all the fans of the Waterboys and Mike Scott, we just want to say thank you for the music uh, for over the years, continuing to do the music. 
Uh, and the new album is uh, All Souls Hill. Uh, Mike Scott of the Waterboys is here, and you get all the info. MikeScottWaterboys.com. Mike, you th- uh, Mike, thank you so much, man. Thank you, man. Just Thank you. Best of luck. Stay safe. Thanks. This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043.